the sound. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much, God, for this day. And Lord, we just thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. We just, we just value this day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Father. And we, just, we thank you, God, for the men and women around this country and around this world, God, that protect our freedoms of this country, Lord. We thank you for the freedoms that we can come together into this place of Lynn Haven, Father, and we can do your, your work and your business. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for our first responders as they keep us safe throughout and this, the employees, Father, and uh, also this commission, Father. We just pray that you'll overlook us and guide us and lead us and direct us, Lord, as we do about this business. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three on the agenda is the mayor's report, and um, I have a fairly short report today. I um, just want to welcome all of you and thank you for being here. And um, I uh, had a meeting this week with Kristen Jacobs, um, who is a congresswoman from South Florida, and we became friends um, through the League of Cities. And she and Matt Surency, the president of League of Cities, are assisting me right now in the formative stages of forming a compact of mayors. Um, from Northwest Florida to address um, the federal agencies about our flooding and infrastructure issues. And we will keep you informed as we set that first date for the mayor's meeting. And um, it's going to be very exciting, and I think um, it will take time, but I have great optimism about what the results will be, as um, many voices always get more attention than one voice when you're going after something. Um, the other comment that I wanted to make to you is on a personal note. Um, I have, um, as many of you know, I work with Bay District Schools as a staff training specialist and um, work between all of the secondary schools um, with the English Language Arts program. And um, I have spoken um, with um, the superintendent and, and several others that I work with, and I am going to be leaving the school district in December of this year. So I only have a few more months um, that I will be working in that capacity, and then I can become a full-time uh, thorn in the side of the city manager. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Mr. Schubert. But I'm looking forward, um, as um, this first year being mayor is coming to a close, I'm looking forward to having even more time to um, devote to seeking that grant money and working with uh, city civic groups and becoming a more, even more involved mayor. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Commissioner Shad, did you have a report? I have no report, ma'am. Commissioner Ashbrook? <laughs> thank you. Um, um, Commissioner uh, Friend? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, first, I wanted to mention that we did attend the, uh, I know several of us were there, uh, we attended the uh, the um, on-site workshop for the library and I just want to take the opportunity to uh, thank all the staff uh, for setting that all up and being available for the public also for Blue Water being there and participating Heritage Club for being there and, and uh, participating and I think it was uh, fairly well attended and I, I hope that we can uh, continue yeah. to answer any of those questions but I, I for one really enjoyed being on site seeing it all mapped out and everything so it really answered a lot of questions that uh, that I may have had, not really that I had, but maybe I could answer anybody else's questions if they have any. Also, I did meet with a city engineer, just to uh, let everyone know that uh, we are uh, continue to work on the rails for trails, so trying to get everything lined up. We, we talked about some funding opportunities so that when uh, the fuel depot happens and partial C becomes the city's, uh, we'll be able to, to keep moving forward on that, and uh, I'll be doing my part to get it on the uh, TPO's priority list as well. So. Hadn't gone away, it's just slow in the process, and hopefully everything will line up and we'll be ready to go when it's time. That's all. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Commissioner Barnes? Um, yes, I had the opportunity to attend the American Legion uh, dinner for the police and firefighters, um, and they did a very good job in recognizing those folks, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, had a little karaoke going on there, and it was pretty good. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you. Um, and there was one other item that I should have mentioned and, and um, I forgot to mention um, that um, I wanted to thank publicly Sheriff McKeithen and Warden Anglin of the Bay County Jail System. You may have seen it on Facebook. Um, Commissioner, uh, 
city manager, uh, Joel Schubert, has worked very diligently to try and bring in um, community service workers to assist our city workers with the cleaning of ditches and other areas. And um, the sheriff very graciously um, has offered, and we accepted his offer um, of bringing in even more uh, workers to help us on the weekend, and is in no way any disparagement of our city workers who work very hard to keep this work up to date. But we have 100 miles of ditches and culverts and, and you know, the flooding issues. And um, they did a spectacular job on the first weekend they were out. And so I just wanted to thank the sheriff again and the warden, and we're looking forward to seeing you know, a lot more progress as they supplement the work that our city workers are doing. Thank you. Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to tag on to uh, Commissioner Barnes, just because she's here, Officer Caitlin Anglin in the back of the room uh, Saturday night was recognized by the American Legion as the Officer of the Year. So since she was here, I wanted to mention that. <laughs> we call her, at least I call her superstar, because she does, she does everything. I mean, literally everything. Yes. She's very well cross-trained in, in PD and helps out in other departments. She's just, it's just a, a pleasure, and we're very proud to have her. Sam Smith was also recognized as the Firefighter of the Year, and I wanted to mention that as well. But I, I do have some recognition if... Um, Officer Gates, Raymond Gates. I've got three. We fell a little behind. This is February's, and uh, Mr. Gates is our communication officer, and he's very well respected, admired by his peers, uh, just a very diligent worker. Uh, but he also, we wanted to recognize him the above and beyond. A lot of the police nostalgia you'll see in our police departments is his doing. He does it at his own expense, on his own time. There's some really neat stuff there, historical value, et cetera, a lot of picture boxes. And we appreciate your service and the good job you do and all the extra effort as well. Here's a black and white. Thing. And the March Employee of the Month is Mrs. Fogel, Suzanne. <laughs> they act surprised. I, I don't know how they don't know, but they always, we always keep it from. Suzanne started out as a dispatch as well. I think been here about five years and, and moved over as a customer service rep. And I can personally attest to there's been several times, and these are the kind of things that go under the radar. We don't want to advertise it, but there's been some of our citizens in trouble that just financially need some help, and um, she's gone above and beyond uh, to help those folks out. But also lately, she's not only helped move the, the office over, but she's, all, and I can attest to this, the uh, building official's office over here, that one of these storage buildings was just a mess. And I mean, that's an understatement. And she did a lot to help clean that up, organize the records, archive them for public records requests, and it was uh, just a tremendous job, and we appreciate it. Thank you. And my last award is Supervisor of the Quarter and Mark Brandstetter. <laughs> Most of you know Mark. <laughs> Mark started the year I graduated high school. <laughs> 1989. Yeah, no problem. I'm here for you. But he, he's got a, a Class C wastewater collection, a Class D drinking water distribution license. He's performed, you know, he, he's the man as far as utilities, and he's been here for several years. Um, he's the guy with his crew that they call late at night that, for utility emergencies, and he gets out there expeditiously so folks don't have a huge interruption in service. Uh, just does a tremendous job, and I can, again, personally attest in the last two years, he's got tremendous passion we're getting a lot of the problems we talk about infrastructure-wise, and you know some of these do cost money that we don't have. But he's very passionate about getting our stormwater right, our utilities right, and, and I appreciate the job you do. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Um, at this time, um, it, is there anything else on the city manager's report? No. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. We'll move on to item number six, which is our city attorney's report. Uh, no report, ma'am. Thank you. 
At this time, we'll move to the consent agenda. And what I'll be doing here is I'll just read these items um, one at a time and then ask for a motion and a second from the board. And then at the end of the, the listing of the items, mm -hmm. if there's anything within these that you would like to discuss or make comment upon, please feel free to do that. Um, item number seven, the minutes from uh, March 22nd, 16, the regular meeting. Item number eight is the approval of amendment number one, Crowder Gulf for Disaster Recovery Services Debris Removal. Item number nine, approval of amendment number one, Ashburn Incorporated for Disaster Recovery Services Debris Removal. Item number 10, approval of amendment number one, Saris Environmental Services Incorporated for Disaster Recovery Services Debris Removal. Item number 11 is the approval of the July 4th, 2016 parade route. Item number 12 is the approval of annual 4th of July fireworks display in the amount of $23,000 to Pyro Shows Incorporated. And item number 13 is the approval of contract Marshall Brothers Construction and Engineering Incorporated for water main replacement phase four in the amount of $277,100. Do I have a motion for approval of these items? I'll move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Um, is there, are there any questions or uh, discussion from the board or any need of staff report for anyone? There appears to be none. Are there any questions or comments from the public? And there appear to be none. At this time, if Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for the consent agenda? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner <clears throat> Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes and the consent agenda is approved. Moving on to new business, item number 14 is the first reading of ordinance 1015, amending section 5.03.00 of the ULDC, exempt signs. Uh, Mr. Schubert, do you have that ordinance? Yes. Ordinance number 1015, an ordinance of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending section 5.03.00 signs of Lynn Haven Unified Land Development Code as it relates to exempt signs, repealing all ordinances in conflict, and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. That's the first reading of the ordinance with no further action required. Item number 15 is the first reading of Ordinance 1016, Section 4.05.00 of the ULDC T&D Design Standards. Ordinance number 1016, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending section 4.05.00 of the Lynn Haven Unified Land Development Code as it relates to standards for traditional neighborhood development, repealing all ordinances in conflict, and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. The first reading of Ordinance 1016 with no further action required. Item number 16 is the first reading of Ordinance 1017, de-annexation 16-1, parcel number 11195-000000. Um, Dr. Rajnikant Patel, um, would you please read Ordinance 1017? An ordinance contracting from the municipal limits of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, a certain parcel of land located at 4836 Highway 389, ID 1195-000-000 for an approximate 4.293 acres of property as more particularly described herein pursuant to Florida statute section 171.051 amending the boundaries of the city to include said land repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith and reciting an effective date. Thank you. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1017 with no further action required. Item number 17 is the first reading of Ordinance 1018, General Employees Retirement System. Ordinance number 1018, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven amending Part 2, Chapter 50, Personnel, Article 5, General Employees Retirement System of the Code of Ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven amending Section 50, through 166, <laughs> definitions by amending the definitions of actual aerial equivalent credited service in spouse, amending sections 50 through 171, benefit amounts and eligibility, amending section 50, 
173 Disability, amending sections 50-175 Optional Forms of Benefits, amending section 50-179 Maximum Pension, amending section 50-188 Prior Government Service, amending section 50-190 Deferred Retirement Option Plan, amending section 50-192 Reemployment After Retirement, providing for codification, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you. The first reading of Ordinance 1018 with no further action required. Item number 18 is the first reading of Ordinance 1019, the Firefighters Retirement System. Ordinance number 1019 an ordinance to be entitled, An Ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven Amending Chapter 50, Personnel, Article 4, Firefighters Retirement System of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Lynn Haven, Amending Section 50-121, Definitions by Amending the Definitions of Actuarial Equivalent, Credited Service, Firefighter and Spouse, Amending Section 50-126, Benefit Amounts and Eligibility, Amending sections 50 128, disability. Amending section 50 130, optional forms of benefits. Amending section 50 135, maximum pension. Amending section 50 144, prior fire service. Amending section 50 147, deferred retirement option plan. Adding new section 50 149, supplemental benefit <coughs> component for special benefits. Chapter 175, share accounts providing for all severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you. That was the first reading of Ordinance 1019 with no further action required. Item number 19 is the first reading of Ordinance 1020. It's the police officer's retirement system. We're ready for that reading. Ordinance number 1020, an ordinance to be entitled, An Ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven Amending Chapter 50, Personnel, Article 3, Police Officers Retirement System of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Lynn Haven, Amending Section 50-76, Definitions by Amending the Definitions of Actuarial Equivalent, Credited Service and Spouse, Amending Sections 50-81, Benefit Amounts and Eligibility, Amending sections 50-83, Disability. Amending sections 50-85, Optional Forms of Benefits. Amending section 50-90, Maximum Pension. Amending section 50-99, Prior Police Service. Amending section 50-101, <coughs> Deferred Retirement Optional Plan. Adding new section 50-104, Supplemental Benefit Component for Special Benefits. Chapter 185, Share Accounts, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you. That completes the first reading of Ordinance 1020 with no further action required. Uh, moving on to item number 20, this will be discussion regarding the City Manager's annual performance evaluation. Um, is there um, any discussion or questions from the Board? Uh, yes, I had asked that we bring this up for discussion for uh, editorial comment. Mr. Schubert has been on the job, I think a little over two years, right at it. And we have not, while we have reaped the benefits, and I'll try to hold my comments briefly, reaped the benefits of his talents, uh, we have not uh, considered, and I think we should, and I'll place that in motion form, some sort of uh, recognition of that, at least in his remuneration, uh, no other contract changes being necessary. To hold things to a relatively short point, I've written down some salient points, uh, and I've kept them to ten. There are more. Uh, since he was hired, <clears throat> a number of things have happened, some of them very visible because they've been thorns in the side of the Commission for many, many years, not the least of which is the 17th Street Ditch uh, culmination there. That actually began a couple of years ago uh, and by happenstance in a conversation with a private individual 
who thought of the solution and brought it to his attention. I happened to be present at this eating, at this breakfast. So I think he deserves a lot for bringing that together with both the contractor who ended up doing it and the funding source. I think that's uh, indicative of his fiscal management. He has a good background in that. And that was borne out, as many of you know, with his able to get the departments living on the resources and the revenues that they generate without having to move interdepartmentally funds from one fund to the other to help support one part of the operation of the city with revenue from another. He also is responsible, of course, for hiring, and I hope I get your name right, Maria. Is it Stout Tate? For her hire, being hired as our leisure services director. And for those who don't take notice, maybe this is not important, but there's been some major improvements, cleaning up areas around town, whether it's the signs, the security gate, uh, the access road over at the sports complex. And so I think he, he's due credit for that hire. Uh, we also have uh, essentially I think a city manager from what I can discern who has gained a lot of respect with the other municipalities in the county. Uh, so he is respected by, respected by his peers, uh, the vendors and the professional service people that we have a lot of, of dealings with. Uh, he has demonstrated some very capable people skills given the contentiousness of balancing out the wants and needs of so many different parties. It's a very difficult job. Uh, thankless, I'm sure, at some time, but now is maybe our time to uh, give him some appreciation for that and thank him. Uh, he has been instrumental in shepherding the fuel depot to what appears to be a final uh, fruition of some sort. We are not exactly what the final, no, what the final product is, but it is, it is set out there and just languished and languished for as many years as I've been on the board, which is only nine. Uh, up until now, uh, he has also been very instrumental in, in, I think, bringing the Lynn Haven, is it Bayou Park, into the fold of the city. Uh, the benefits of that yet to be un, uh, untold, but 91 acres is a nice piece of land to acquire and have for the benefits of the citizens of Lynn Haven. Got three other items and then I will close. Uh, he began work a couple of years ago to secure funds, uh, some of which you've seen put to good use at Porter Park with the uh, retaining wall. And there are other funds out there that other governments are holding on with a clenched fist, but we feel they've been committed uh, in large part because of his negotiations with the county on the Restore Act. Uh, he's, of course, worked with the CRA and continues to try to do some work and bring some things to fruition over there at Sheffield Park. I still have high hopes that we'll begin to see some movement over there. And the other, I think, is just this building we're in. The fact that we have a dilapidated building that part of our departments were in, they no longer have to sit there with the cockroaches and the other vermin. They're brought under one roof where citizens can go to a remodeled city hall, both of which were done at lesser cost than had we contracted them out and gone through all of those nuances. Uh, in addition, I could probably mention a few other things, but again, I'll, I'll defer to time. The only other thing I'll mention is that his auto allowance, I guess we're thankful and grateful that he ended up having a four-wheel drive. Otherwise, if we were in the providing of car business, which we haven't been for many, many years, we wouldn't have somebody to show for us around 91 acres of wilderness, 600 plus acres up on, in the, in the uh, white western area, let alone the fuel depot. So personally, and I think others probably have benefited from him having the wear and tear accumulate on his vehicle so that we could take tours of areas that aren't on very nice paved or, in some cases, unpaved streets. Therefore, I will close, and I would like to make an emotion form that we change his remuneration in two ways. 
One, that we increase his auto allowance by $100 a month from its current $350 to $450. And the other, in deference to the fact he has had no remuneration change in two years, and part of this is defensive, and part of it's as a reward, that we increase his remuneration by 6%. Now, if anybody wants to know what those numbers translate out to outside of percentages, I've brought that for you in transparency. Obviously, $100 a month is $1,200 cost to us annually. 6% of his current rate would be just under $6,500 in his annual. And then you must also, I cannot calculate what that does in pension contribution, but of course we have some matching so Social Security, so that would add probably four or $500 to that number. So we're looking here at a total package cost to the city, which of course I will mention he has saved us in these other fiscal management areas hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and is of course looking at liquidating some of our non-performing assets, has already done so, to bring those monies back in to be spent on things we actually need. So I'll place in motion form that we uh, increase his uh, salary by that 6% and his auto allowance by $100 a month. There's been a motion and a second um, for, I'm not going to repeat your motion, I'll let you, I'll let you um, bring it up again. If, I, think, I think if I understood you correctly that you were uh, making a motion that basically a six, $6,500 a year in remuneration to, is that correct? I think 6%. it was actually 6%. 6% yeah. of his current whatever, salary. Whatever 6% of his figure. current salary. Okay. That works out. I stand corrected. 6400 and some odd dollars. Are there questions or discussion from the board? There's been a, a motion and a second. Uh, I would like to say that I echo uh, my fellow commissioner's sentiments and what he expressed. As some of you know, and I'm sure you would be the first ones to remind me, that when we went through the hiring process, uh, I voted against <coughs> hiring. Mr. Stewart, not because of any personal reasons, it was lack of experience. Right? Since that time, and I've had many meetings with him and observed what he has accomplished and what he has done, uh, we couldn't have made a better choice. And, you know, I'll be the first one to admit that. And uh, we've been very honest with each other. I think within the first week he was here, I told him I'd voted against him but it was not for personal reasons. But I think we were lucky. I think we got more than uh, we bargained for when he was hired. And I highly support um, the recommendations that have been made. I also want to uh, echo that as well. I think Mr. Schubert has done a fantastic job at coming in at a time where uh, we had some things that we, had, we needed to take care of. He stepped up to the plate, um, has done a tremendous job, not only in, rep in representing the city of Lynn Haven, but representing the commission as well and keeping us abreast of, of all the activities that's taken place here within our city. And so I, uh, I totally 100% support this. And uh, I think we could not have made a better choice in hiring Mr. Schubert at the time that we did. Yep, Mayor, if I may. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, echo everything, but a few of the things that we discussed were um, his responding to citizens' needs, communication. Uh, the budget is a really big one for me. It goes back all the way to the interview. You all have heard me say it before, but um, one of the things during the interview process, I ask each candidate about our budget, and uh, to my surprise, uh, when Mr. Schubert mentioned the same goals that I had for the budget, which were to uh, stop the transferring and build up the reserves um, was on his list of our budget. So that was really good. And, and he accomplished that in less, you know, he set the goal. Basically what I got out of that is how we set the goal or set the goal, formulated the plan, worked the plan, and then accomplished that goal uh, under the timeline that he had set originally to accomplish that goal. So that's one of the highlights for me. And uh, non-performing assets is also a good one. But I can't go without saying it was, you know, about uh, our, our other staff. 
um, I always like to use the opportunity that I believe that we got the best candidate that we could get because of the support staff that we had during the time that we were going through the selection process. Um, that's really one of the highlights of uh, my serving as commissioner is how we were able to take our time. Uh, we were able to go through several applicants. We had several meetings. We had workshops. We put the applicants in front of uh, citizens, which I don't think they were prepared for at the time because I don't know that we were. Uh, it was just a, it was a good process, and I think by that uh, we got a, an outstanding city manager that I that I hope will be with us for a very long time. So obviously, I I completely support the uh, recommendation and the motion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion from the public regarding this? Any comments? Mayor, if I, I just have one comment. Sure. <clears throat> this will require a written amendment to his uh, employment contract, and I just would need to know an effective date for that. Would it be today? Yes. Today. Okay. Um, I, too, would like to make... I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Would you like to come forward? Sure. <coughs> I'm Debbie Richland from 106 East 18th Street, and I'd li just like to mention that when I called about the issue of the um, commercial development going next to me. Um, talked to Joel on the phone. He was willing to come out and talk to us and to come up with an equitable solution uh, with me and the developer. And that takes a lot of people skills and it takes a lot of patience because I know that each of us had our, our own wants and needs. So thank you for that. Thank you. Does anyone else have a comment or a question? Um, I would also um, like to echo um, my um, uh, feelings of great confidence in the city manager that we have. Um, at the same time, I uh, must um, echo that with um, Mr. Schubert was hired by a different mayor and a different commission than <clears throat> one that sits before you now. And um, I have the greatest respect for Mr. Schubert, and we generally see um, eye to eye and our shared vision for the city on most counts. Um, we do have several areas that we don't see eye to eye on and um, we've had this discussion and um, Mr. Schubert and I as we have worked together over this first year I'm the new I'm a new mayor and he was a fairly new city manager he had another year of experience with the city on me um, but we do have widely divergent um, views especially on uh, salaries in the city and um, while I would be um, willing to go in some direction of financial remuneration for the great job that he's done, because I did rate him outstanding on every single item on his evaluation with great um, pride. I, I feel he has done a great job. Um, I can't mark him as not doing an outstanding job simply because we don't share the same views on some of the ways that the city should be run. And so um, I hope that it's not taken personally or that, um, again, that I'm sort of the wicked one. But um, in view of just looking at recent, um, because I do work for a, a, a state agency and looking at the, the raises that were given to professionals there, they're not anywhere near 6%. And in this area, salaries such as we have for many of our positions here at the city of Lynn Haven are far above what those who live in the city make the average or the mean income. So with that said, I don't mean to sound um, mean or in any way disparaging of the job that Mr. Schubert is doing because if I were voting right now to hire him again, I would certainly vote for that because I think he is taking uh, great strides in bringing the city forward. I particularly love the fact that he's keeping money in the accounts where it needs to be kept, that stormwater money is no longer being moved to general fund and, and those kinds of examples. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but anyway, I just had to make that because I, my vote's not going to be a positive one. I'll just say that in advance. And I don't want anyone to think that I um, have any uh, disparaging view of our city manager at all. I just think that 6% is too much for the area that we live in because of the salary that's already in place for the city manager. And uh, if we were to get a windfall of money, then you know things might look differently um, if we could get things in order in the city. But um, I just think that 6% is way above what you see happening in our uh, corporate area of Bay County and in our state agencies. Many of the cities are giving those kinds of raises, but not, not the state agencies. Thank you. Is there any other comment or discussion? Would you like to say something, Mr. Sure, Mr. sure. I, I just, 
Am I on? I, I'd just like to thank the commission for their comments. I, I couldn't be more proud to work for the city of Lynn Haven, and I appreciate the leadership and direction. And, I, and I'd also like to acknowledge the staff that, that work for me. They do all the heavy lifting, and I appreciate all the support. And I feel like we have accomplished a lot in the last two years, and, and all credit due to them and the leadership of the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, if there's no further comment or discussion, question from anyone, uh, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? No. And the motion is carried. And congratulations, Mr. Schubert. Um, at this time, we'll move to item number 21, public commentary. Anything that anyone would like to talk about? Sure. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I noticed in the agenda that I received over the internet, all the items here, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, are no further comment. These are items that deal with discussion and people should be aware of what's going on. Um, it's just no further action required. You're welcome to I, comment or question. I, I, okay, I I'm sorry. No comment after that. There are no workshops. There haven't been workshops in a long time. And these items here, I would think that this public would be like to understand what's going on, especially ULDC, changes to the TND, et cetera, et cetera. I just note that the public is not involved in this, and it goes down to one last meeting it seems to me, inclusion, preordained. So even if we had something to say, we wouldn't get anywhere. My particular comment is dealing with the ULDC and the TND. If this subject deals with the 950 acres, which now is diminished from the 950 acres down to approximately maybe 200 acres left. Thank you. Um, the original conception of the TND over 10 years ago was brought up to the people, <coughs> DCA, and every three-letter alphabet group that you can imagine to approve that. This commission and the state of Florida dashed the DCA to the rocks, threw it away, with the caveat that let the builders do whatever they want to do, do the damage, and we'll catch it later. DCA was the checks and balances for the citizens. TND was bounced against that very heavily. The citizens were involved, the state of Florida was involved, and again, the three-letter groups. Lately, I've been seeing with the 950 acres that they're chipping away everything that we set up back then to make it an environment for the builder. Mr. Shad summed it, Commissioner Shad summed it up pretty well last, last meeting. He said, we've set the bar up that high. Why are we destroying that bar? The bar was set that high with the TND, with the ULDC, and it continually gets changed. And I assume that this next change will be a large-scale amendment. And without workshops, without any involvement with the citizens, we don't have anybody talking about it. And it goes down to the last meeting. I know I'm getting close to my three minutes. No, no, no. I wasn't going to call you on the three minutes. I was just going to call to your attention about the, the, planning, uh, the planning board that met and, and discussed the issue, and they were you know, voting in positive. And so I, I listened to them a lot in, in these type of things. I don't know how, but I, I know there was a time for discussion with the planning board, but I certainly have no objection to this being workshopped. I'm, the city manager can address it as well. I mean, if, that, if you think that's something we need to do, if the public would like to have a workshop. I appreciate the comment on the planning commission. I've attended the planning commissions too. And that's the same scenario we have here. The builder presents his package. Excuse me. Our city planner presents the builder's package. Does not present the city's or the citizen's viewpoint presents the builder's package. And you will notice in the package that went with this, it reads the builder, the builder, the builder, the builder. 
I get a little bit of concerned when I've seen what's happened with the 950 acres over these years, how it's been chipped away and does not resemble the package that was presented here 10 years ago in this building that was sold to the people of this town as to what that place would be. It doesn't look that way now. What my concern is, there doesn't seem to be any city citizens involvement in this, and originally it was. We did get very involved with the TND. It took a year, many meetings with the citizens, many meetings with the state of Florida, many meetings with DCA, EDP, DEP, and again, the three letters. In this package, I do not see any citizens' concerns here. I see only builders and the city planner representing the builder, not the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not going to make a motion as the mayor, but I, I will. I, I like to listen to what people have to say, and I was asking the attorney if it's possible for us to put this as an item for public hearing at the next meeting rather than a consent item. I don't know if that will happen, but I will certainly discuss that with staff. If That would give a little more chance for discussion unless somebody else wants to comment on it. May I make a comment? Of course. Um, I, I think aptly, as you pointed out, it was, and I understood uh, the concerns voiced, uh, but it was covered under the Planning Commission. It's required to be in, in two of our agendas. You do have the opportunity to comment. The reason why we're not having a lot of workshops anymore is because of the format change uh, of the workshops where you're allowed public input, and frankly, it, it mimics the same format for the commission meeting. So we found that redundant, especially having the same meeting and the same discussion two days in a row. So uh, that's why we're not workshopping. Certainly I could, you, you know, it's not on the consent agenda. It was a first reading and that's just the process, but you're able to make your comments today. You're also able to make your comments in a, in a further, in, in the second commission meeting. But, and I will say as part of this TND, this, these were self inflicted wounds per se by this developer. They could have gone out there and not done a TND and tr done a traditional mixed use or low density residential and comported to the high standards that Lynn Haven already has in their ULDC. They chose to do a TND. They essentially wrote this whole TND. They painted themselves into the corner. I can't speculate whether the commission would have approved it several years back or not, but they were the ones that put all these limitations on themselves, and now they're seeing that the market is not willing to reward them for these limitations, and they want to sell homes. Lynn Haven wants them to sell homes. So barring it be a detriment to safety or uh, us maintaining the utilities, uh, we have no issue with them releasing some of the self-inflicted you know, inflicted wounds, as I, I stated in, in this, and probably hindsight, Monday morning quarterback, and they wouldn't have done a TND. And I think if they were here, they'd tell you that. So rather than every time they submit a plat, rather than having caveats well, the, the, in having the commissioners, well, they're going to have to deviate from the TND, I requested them take a look at your TND. Let's not keep talking about these individually and just do one swooping change on this and let's be done with it. Let the commission consider that. So, so that's what this is. Thank you. Um, did you have a comment, Ms. Richard? I'm sorry. I, oh, I just wanted to say that the next hearing, the second um, hearing will be, a will be, a, the second reading will be a public hearing. Thank you. So the next reading will be a public hearing on this item, so there will be some more time for discussion. I appreciate that. Um, at this time, are there any other comments or items for discussion? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Blitkoff. I'm Frances Blitkoff, 1515 Missouri Avenue in Haven, Florida. Uh, I'm glad he brought up Rails to Trails again. This has been my pet peeve for since 2003, I guess, I joined with them in Tallahassee, and uh, they have really worked and brought millions <coughs> of trails and things together. I have lots of information, 
and I'm ready. I would volunteer to work with a committee or whatever you want to do, go to Tallahassee, because it's time. It's time we were doing this. We've been doing it for a long time, brought it up, and I think we have people that would probably be for it also, a lot of people that will be for it. So whatever I can do, I'll be happy to. Well, I would certainly like to just recognize and thank you for all the work that you've done for years on Rails to Trails because you were certainly the torch bearer for a long time. You were the only one that was really out there pushing for it. So I know that... Keep at it. I mean, years ago, though, way, way back. <laughs> but um, you, and, you and Commissioner Friend um, will probably make great partners in that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if, if you will indulge me, are there any other comments or questions? Yes, sir. Mark Never at 109 Lakeview Terrace. This is more of a comment uh, to all of you. Uh, I've been here over eight years, and I've seen a, a dramatic improvement in the past year and a half now of, of the, the appearance of the city. And the question I have, and, and maybe this has come up in the past, and if it has, I excuse myself. Why is the post office in Lynn Haven excused from having to look like a presentable facility? A hamburger stand next to it looks a lot better than the post office. I've tried calling as a citizen, and I get a <coughs> runaround. Can the city do something about this? If they're going to be guests in our city, they should play the rules in the game if businesses have to follow that suit. And if we want to have a nice looking city, uh, I know they budget for, I work for the government, I know they budget for maintenance and all that, so uh, I don't know what their excuse is, and it's none of my business. But as a citizen, that's a heavily traveled corridor there for tourists and residents. I'd just like to know if, I, if it could be approached in a, in a politically correct way. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's a great comment. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. While we're talking about the post office, I would like to know how we are supposed to access that post office. The, um, if you're going north on Highway 77, you have to practically stop in the middle of the road to make that acute right-hand turn. And there's always a divot right at the corner where people have not quite made it. And if you're, and if you're driving a, a regular car, you probably pull out you know, your transmission or something if you hit that hole. And when Walmart went in, all roads now lead to Walmart. Um, and you cannot get into our post office. Now, I don't understand why we can't have a right-hand turn lane there. When you leave that light going north, um, people think that you're going to go forward. They don't expect you to stop in the middle of the road and stop traffic to turn into our post office. If you're, if you're, make, if you're traveling south on Highway 77, you turn between the dollar store and the bank and you drive through the bank's parking lot in order to get into the post office. Now, if you make a right onto whatever street that is that goes by Kaleidoscope, you have to go all the way down to Walmart to turn around legally. Now, this is ridiculous. Um, and. Uh, I think that that needs to be addressed. I'm totally in agreement with you. Um, I, I think it was done to accommodate a large business that came to Lynn Haven. So I, I'm not sure what directions can be done, you know, what, what changes, but I, but I know the people who work at the post office hate it. I mean, that's I one of the things they said. Have a right -hand turn lane. I don't know. Well, and I don't know what the other feelings are on the commission, but I think it's something worth talking about. I certainly do. I don't know if any of them want to comment. <laughs> I can give you a little bit of history. Uh, the other commissioners were here. It's not that that attempt at traffic control was not made. Two things occurred. DOT brought the median back on 26th Street to that point because they didn't want traffic exiting onto the parkway and people trying to get into the post office to be, uh, I guess, uh, relying on people to give them breaks to get in and, and get out. The second thing, most importantly, might address the gentleman's issue from the prior question, was that uh, 
you will find, or we found out, that the United States Postal Service pretty much does what they want. And basically will tell an individual or the city of Lynn Haven, or for that matter, the state of Florida, they don't care what you want. If you'll notice when you turn into the access road at Walmart, there is a pre-engineered cutout that was supposed to be an access road to the post office. But the Postal Service, through the local postmaster and the Southeast Postmaster and their engineering team up in Atlanta would have nothing to do with it. That land was actually dedicated by Walmart for an entryway into the post office off of 26th Street. And there was all they needed was whatever the right of way was to be given by the post office. And Walmart had agreed to build the road. So, once again, you can thank the people who I know are hardworking people, but their upper echelon who control the, the post office, they were totally uncooperative, even though all they had to do was deed a sufficient right-of-way for that road to be put in there so that you could continue down, and instead of trying to do a U-turn, you would turn into Walmart, have a lighted street back to the post office, but now all you have is a bent curb and an asphalt apron. That's where it was stopped. But with all due respect, I think the post office was irritated because of what happened to the road that they had that was done because of Walmart being there. And so that's why the post office, that was my understanding that the post office was not wanting their customers to have to come through Walmart. They wanted them to be able to come the way they always had. And so they were irritated and they didn't, that's why they were so obstinate about the cut through road, which is now a road to nowhere. But that, that may not be completely factual. That's just what I was told when I researched it. So um, I do think we need to look into changing something there because I think it's unsafe and, and there's actually a, um, a cross there on the corner there of someone who didn't make that turn. So, um, are there any other comments or questions today? I have one um, oversight that I need to read, a uh, proclamation um, for Arbor Day so that we remain a tree city. I missed it at the beginning of the meeting. I apologize. This proclamation. Um, whereas, in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, I, Margot D. Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2016 as Arbor Day in the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, and I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. In witness whereof I've hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida to be affixed this 12th day of April, 2016. Thank you. At this time, if there is no... Oh, we need a motion to accept the proclamation. I move approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. There's been a first and a second motion. And if you would please call the roll, Mr. Schubert. Aye. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Barnes. Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook. Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes. And the proclamation has passed. And if there's no other comments or questions today, thank you. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>